It's no secret that cults have some really insane rules they expect people to follow, and Jenny and I are going to share some of our craziest ones with you. Jenny grew up as a Scientologist, which is one of the most wild and secretive cults that I've ever come across. And the more I learn about it, the more my flabber is completely gasted. I spent the first two decades of my life in a weird redneck cult. Think the Duggars, but with a splash of Amish, minus the buggies, and at least two handfuls of corporal punishment. Fun times. Please hop into the chat with any questions that come up. And if you're joining us after, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Whose cult has the craziest rules? You tell us right now. Yay, finally. <laughs> 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 Hi. Hello. We had a few technical difficulties, but yes, 16 minutes after the fact, we made it. Exactly. And we might still have a few little bumps and whatever as well. We try to figure out technology. And you know what? I, at the end of the day, I'm just going to blame the weather because we have like tornado weather here right now. And that's out of my hands it's in the lord's hands <laughs> so exactly <laughs> hi rihanna and sandy how are you guys today thank you for hopping on with us i don't know did you guys watch jenny's interview that we did before i want to know i also linked it in the video description so if anyone wants to go back and watch uh the interview i did with jenny all like she just really got into scientology and her background with that it's super interesting if you guys want to watch that later but yeah, fun ski, yeah. fun ski, fun ski. How is it going? It Jenny, going... what are you up to? Um, I guess I've been doing a lot of work lately. Work got real hectic, but it's finally mellowed out. So it's not so wretched for me right now. <laughs> and otherwise, you know, just exposing abuses and whatnot. Just another day in paradise, baby. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> But we have some interesting things to talk about tonight. Man, yeah. I know. We came armed with receipts and uh, screenshots and all the all of the proof because, like, it's our experience. But I don't know about you, but sometimes even when I'm talking about my own personal experience, people want to question what I went through. <laughs> so sometimes even though I'm like, hey, I can't trans transport back in time and take you with me to see how terrible it was. But what we can do is show you some of the stuff that was actually outlined, like in your case, some of the Scientology things that you've shared with me. And I have actually have a lot of questions for you too. I'll probably have more questions than people watching. <laughs> I just, I'm so fascinated yeah. by it. <laughs> but that might yeah. spark the questions that maybe they were thinking and didn't know how to like word it, especially so um, for people who've like kind of never been in a cult or in that, you know, raised with that or whatever. Yeah. Definitely. Well, you ready to battle it out, I guess? Let's see who has it. No, I'm just kidding. And you know what? Let me make a disclaimer. It's, okay. Trauma is not a competition. So let me just yeah. put that out there. But I am a competitive person. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so let's freaking go. It's not a competition, it but I am on. going. <laughs> but I am really fucked up. So <laughs> we're going to talk about yeah. it. Yeah. No, it's true. Like, like I never get, I like, I always tell people, you know, when talking about different traumatic experiences or whatever, it's not a pissing contest because the different things may seem like more extreme in some case or another, but the way the person is able to deal with it may be so much harder for them. And so like, you know, it, it, you can't really go, you know, it's not apples to apples right. kind of a situation. There's way too many factors. And, you know, anyways, the stuff we go over today, too. Also, I'm just speaking from my experience. I do get, like, things nitpicked about what I say. And, you know, I'm not trying to generalize statements, but I can, I am speaking to the mindset that I had at the time. And that I, like, even when I left, what I slowly got rid of, but the way I now view it. So these are my opinions. Mm -hmm. It's the way I'm viewing it. So... And that's valid. Yeah. So if y'all don't like that, then get to stepping, as we say in the South. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I'm ready to dive into it. Hey, Anna, how's it going? How is it going? Um, if you guys want to be precious little heathens for me and Jenny and give the video a thumbs up, that'd be awesome because the algorithm loves that shit. And Absolutely. we love you. So that would be awesome. 
we appreciate you. Um, yeah. So this was actually Jenny's idea. Jenny wanted to reach out and asked about doing a live because she ran across a interview I had done with Andrew Gold a while back on that channel. And it was when I first, well, not first started sharing, but pretty early on started sharing my personal cult story. And um, so he interviewed me on his channel. And I talked a lot about, I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with To Train Up a Child or Mike and Debbie Pearl, the IBLP, the shiny, happy people, Duggar family, all of that crap. That's kind of how I was raised or a lot of many pieces of that were in my childhood. And so Jenny said she ran across that interview and she was like, hey, we should kind of compare some of these, the BS that we experienced growing up. But Jenny, I kind of want to see, I kind of want to hear about your relationship rules. Okay. Yeah, let's just dive or straight can, on it. We can toss, we can go back and forth. We don't have to just do one and then the other. If we want to kind of toggle between mine and yours. Yeah. Like, you guys want? What yeah, do you guys want? You can let us know. Yeah. Go ahead and put it in there. And it wouldn't hurt to like, you know, I can go over what we thought, what we believed, how we were. And then you can go and compare to that maybe to what you experienced and stuff. Yeah, definitely. Uh, where do you want to start? Take it away. Thank you guys for liking and commenting. I appreciate you guys. Okay. So, I mean, we were um, like, so I was um, brought up in like Scientology, but I was brought up in the the higher level of Scientology, which is called the C organization. It was attempted to be somewhat modeled after the Navy, but um, Scientology based obviously. And these are the people who are super, super dedicated. They sign a billion year contract. And yes, that was a billion. And um, you do nothing else but like live, eat and breathe the, you know, C org and Scientology. And so, in that organization, that level of this group, the um, rules surrounding relationships was very tight. It was very strict. Um, I guess it's kind of like that Puritan type culture. Mm -hmm. And so I figured it might be interesting to look at what our rules were and like some, like start with some of, I guess, Aaron Harbord's theories on the subject of sex and, you know, whatever. I mean, you weren't doing any kind of little shenanigans until you were actually married. So that if there's was... one thing about cults, they all are obsessed with sex for, for, for saying that they hate it so much. Number one, they're always, the higher ups are always into some weird shit. Just uh, that's not yeah, a like, date. Sorry, but I agree. they are like, in, in one way or the other, whether it's like super extreme, super abusive, super not there, it's like so much emphasis on it. Yeah. Yeah. As and Mike what do you Myers, think, what do you think what people are going to do? Who? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I think we have a delay. We <laughs> spent 16 minutes trying to figure this Oh, no, 25 minutes trying to figure oh this God. out. <laughs> For girls, uh... what can we say? Hmm. Anyways, I was just going to say, yeah. as Mike Myers said, they put the emphasis on the wrong syllable. Okay. So I'll start with this thing on the pain and sex thing. What do you think? Perfect. Okay. So um, this was a guiding reference, if you will, in Scientology. Um, it was heavily used in different ways, but it was to provide a lot of the background on the um, negativeness that sex can have on somebody. <laughs> so it's called pain and sex. And um, I'm gonna read it out loud as best as I can. I'm not great at reading out loud, so bear with me. And um, there's gonna be a few words that get used and then I'm gonna try to clarify them sort of-ish, but it's not that important. All right, he said, um, note, this HCOB, that's just the type of this type of policy that it is, probably won't increase my popularity, but would be very remiss if I did not pass on important discovery, an important discovery. There are two items in this universe that cause more trouble than many others combined. One is pain, the other is sex. 
one should know more about these things. They may, um, they may have applications, but they are used by destructive beings in great volume to cave others in. So to cave people in is to kind of, that's a Scientology word, but it really is like you're taking away their entire ability to function, um, exist, et cetera. That's there not very big upon the screen. So I don't know if I'm going to leave this up here because it's it's too small for people to read anyway. It's <laughs> but tiny. But at least yeah. you know it exists. You can see it there and I'm reading There's it. proof, guys. <laughs> what more do you want from me? Yeah, exactly. Um, so one should know more about these things. Um, they have many applications, but they are used by destructive beings in, general, um, in great volume to cave others in. Despite the false data of Freud, psychologists, psychiatrists, and other criminals, because I guess all of them are criminals, mm, naturally, um, yeah. they are not native to a being. So pain and sex are not native to a being like a, a person. Um, they are only artificial wavelengths. They have exact frequencies and can be manufactured. Um, a being or machine can synthesize, synthesize you know that word, mm -hmm. space. Synthesize? Either one. Yeah. <laughs> Think of the 80s. <laughs> Music. Okay. Pain becomes a lock on a being's abhorrence for misalignment of his own electrical flows. It is a lock upon unconsciousness, which shuts off knowingness. Sex is a lock on and perversion of the joy of creation, which involves a whole being, like person, and expands him. But by using just one wavelength, sex, this can be perverted and he contracts. When pain enters a scene, a being withdraws, um, contracts, and can go unconscious. When sex enters the scene, a being fixated, fixates and loses power. Destructive creatures, um, destructive creatures who do not want people big or reaching, since they are terrified of punishment due to their crimes, invented pain and sex to shrink people and cut their alertness, knowingness, power, and reach. That's okay. Can you who... could you summarize what all of that means? Because I think it's a lot. Like I'm, right? I'm gathering, yeah, I'm gathering some of that. But like for those of us who aren't familiar, maybe with the terminology, because it is such a different language. Like, could you summarize what that really like means? Like, yeah. because he's saying like it's outside of your being, or it's part of. So every time he talks about a being, he's talking about you as the person or a person. He believes that, you know, you aren't like a physical structure, but you're actually like a spiritual being. So he just shortens it to being. Um, but what he's talking about is that pain and sex were um, created by these um, evil people <laughs> and are being used to like um more or less like destroy a person to cut their reach to um subdue them to um like distract them perversion. or whatever yeah like it's like um when he says like they'll lose power as a being you know mm -hmm. if, like they get stuck with these things if they're not here's the thing about it's sex right. it's only perversion and perverted if you're a perverted and perverse person <laughs> Otherwise, why? It's not. <laughs> but okay. I know. It's like, because like where he says right here, he, kind of, he goes, like he's talking about these people. He thinks they're like criminals and he includes in this band of criminals, he includes psychologists, psychiatrists, Freud, you know, that, like he's saying these types are <laughs> criminals. But he says that pain and sex were the invented tools of degradation. So that's, he's saying that, that these two things, he's saying they're not native to the person, but they're created because they can be synthesized. I kind of don't know why I can't say that word today. Synthesized? Yeah. I think it's my retainer. I'm going to blame oh. it on that. <laughs> Hi, Sue. And, uh, <laughs> so... And the reason we're covering this like nitty gritty is because there's the next thing that more clearly lays out the rules, but you mm. have to sort of understand that this is the reasoning behind it is the fact that sex is one of the evil tools of degradation. 
Interesting. Interesting. Even though it's what's used to procreate. And I guess that's his point is that anyways, I'll just, <laughs> just keep reading. Which is, it's so funny. Just, just like the variation in cults, because like the, let's see the interview I did a couple, what, two weeks ago with the gentleman whose grandfather started a polygamous cult, like their whole way of thinking is it's all about procreation. It's all about as many wives, as much sex as possible, because you need to repopulate the earth under the specific order and, you know, teachings and directive. And then you go to a different cult like Scientology and it's the opposite. It's like forbidden. And there's so many other cults where it's forbidden, except you're allowed to, you know, screw the cult leader at whenever he wants, you know, it's just like, Isn't however that, people yeah. can use sex, like these people, however they can use sex or our physical bodies to just kind of manipulate people or keep people controlled is the direction that they're going to go with it. Mm -hmm. Do you want to read that? Do you want to read this comment up on screen? Cause you're probably going to understand it a little bit better than me. Okay. So it says, wow, great. Uh, wow. Great topic such a diverse perspective from others like Mike Brown, who say that Scientology approach to 2D fanaticism as a means to control Sea Org on the ship. So yeah, uh, Mike Brown's a friend of mine. He was actually um, in what was called the Cadet Org of Scientology. If you saw my video um, mm -hmm. where I talked about Lord of the Flies in real life, I, I covered a lot on the subject of the Cadet Org and that craziness. And so Mike was actually um, there with me at that time. We were 10, um, 10, 11, 12. And um, yeah, so it, 2D means second dynamic. I was going to cover that in a little bit, but um, <laughs> that in in a sense, the way it gets used in, in Scientology and especially the C organization is in regards to relationships. It just gets referred mm -hmm. to as the second dynamic or 2D. Okay. Um, yeah, so... Um, <laughs> Should I read some more? What do you think? <laughs> yeah, if you want to, like, whatever is easier for people to understand as far as maybe summarizing might okay. be a little bit, at least I'm able, maybe it's just my little brain, but like, I'm able to grasp it yeah. a little bit better. Even just reading some yeah. of these comments is like a foreign language. It really, it's like kind of reading, it's like, I understand the words, but the how they're put together is different from anything I've ever read. So it's super interesting. I, I know. Learn, I want to learn about it. This one says, interesting, read elsewhere that Hubbard and co wrote, rewrote the rules after learning the initial first Sea Org's ships actually turned into Sea Orgies. <laughs> oh, <wait. laughs> that's, that's pretty good. That's, oh, pretty that's hilarious. <laughs> oh, 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 hang on, Jenny. Did you see this? <laughs> oh, my God. We were talking about it beforehand. <laughs> yeah, I was going to show at the end, but um, for those who saw my interview with Aaron, it was probably the only comment I happened to see was the tootie flows, tootie flows. and sexy vibes. <laughs> you had to be there, man. You had to be there. I know it's true. Well, because someone misunderstood 2D and they thought we were saying 2D, like T-O-O-T-Y. Yeah. And I was trying to explain what 2D was, you know, 2D flowing. And I said, it was, it's like flirting or putting out them sexy vibes. <laughs> yeah, girl. So <laughs> <laughs> we had this question come up and I don't know the answer, certainly. So this is all you. Uh, okay. So what you just read, sex can create engrams the same way pain creates engrams. Yeah. You know, more or less actually, because in, so in Scientology, an engram is um, you have like, in your mind, you have like basically he in Dianetics, he defines that you have like a, a reactive mind and an analytical and the reactive mind is recording during moments of pain and unconsciousness. And um, and so like you can have what out in the world we call triggers. So like, let's say someone's screaming, you're such a doofus while the person's like in pain. And then sometime later on, he can go like down the street and someone my say the doofus thing and it'll kind of trigger that pain or because he constantly now maybe he has a chronic pain he constantly thinks i'm such a doofus i'm such a doofus you know and then starts acting that way and so it's an irrational thought it's a rational fear it's like 
maybe psychosomatic pain. And he's saying that these come from these engrams. So yeah, mm -hmm. to whoever said that smart, clearly they watch a lot of the ex Scientology stuff. <laughs> Someone's on their Scientology shit. <laughs> exactly. <Little brain. laughs> yeah. And you know, I will, I guess I won't bore everyone with this whole thing, but the more, I guess the upshot of the whole thing is that, um, it's sort of what I read where he's saying that these things can be used as tools for degradation and that like you have these criminals, you know, who are, who are utilizing it that way and getting a population like overworked mm -hmm. and in these area, you know, especially in the area of sex and it's like creating this degradation. It's, you know, becoming, I would say necessarily a downfall, but it's causing them to like, as a being lose their power and do bad and stuff like that. He, um, let's see, I'm, let me see if I can find a couple. Which is, I mean, yeah. anything can become a downfall or a crutch when used in the extreme, not just sex. But I also find it interesting, like he's so against psychiatrists and psychologists and Freud mm -hmm. and just all of that. But then, and the military, but then literally just, just like picks things from those exact fields to create this own version. So it's like he's so against everything else because it would essentially disprove his quote unquote original like theory and teachings. I don't know. It's just, yeah. It's well, I'll read this paragraph <laughs> and I'll read this paragraph. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I'm on a delay, I yeah. guess, but um, I'll read the paragraph and I'll explain some of his, what he's saying about the psychiatrist and stuff like that hmm. in relation to the sex stuff. Oh boy. He's, he says, um, he goes on about a couple different things. And then he says, people who do the most irrational things, I'm sorry, people do the most irrational things when overcharged with sex and prostitutes use it as a knowing stock and trade. Combined pain and sex make up the insane Jack the Rippers who killed only prostitutes and the whole strange body of sex murder freaks, including Hinkley. I guess that was a crazy hmm. murderer person. And the devotees of late night horror movies. <laughs> Y'all heard it here junkies. first. There you go. <laughs> well, shit. <laughs> he says, under false data of the psychs, so that's psychiatrists, psychologists, mm. psychotherapists, all of them, who have been on the track a long time. So the track, the way he explains it, that's like your whole long record of all the lives that you have lived over and over, you know, through like, because he says we've lived, you know, thousands of times, you know, we just get a new body or whatever. But he says um, the false state of the sites who have been on the track a long time and are the sole cause of decline in this universe. The sole cause of decline in this universe. So we're not even just talking about Earth now. We're like Ooh. the whole universe. Dang, I didn't realize they had that type of impact, but go on. <laughs> yes. Both pain and sex are gaining ground in this society and coupled with robbery, which is a hooded companion for blah, 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 blah. Um, and he go talks about going into saint <laughs> insane asylums and prisons. Anyways, it, this thing just goes in all different directions. But um, let's see. It, uh, musings of a madman, I'll say. Yeah, and he says... For wherever there is mystery and both pain and sex have been these for man, there are answers. Both pain and sex could have messed up your life. The above may be some answers you've been looking for. Um, <laughs> yeah. I okay, bet okay. they are. So, so that's such a long-winded way of being like, you know, because how I was raised, it was just like, you're not going to have sex till you're married. And that's that because stay pure. <laughs> But his is like this really long, drawn out, like complicated breakdown of why sex is bad. Yeah. And I'm not even reading you like even he even has a thing where he talks about masturbation and it and that gives the impression that it's not OK. So like even a lot of people in the C organization will like give that up in confessions as a sin because you know, like they, you know, mm -hmm. from what they read and feel, they feel like it's a sin to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, I know in the Mormon church also, there's like, when it comes to like um, the highest sins, there's 
murder and then there's sex outside of marriage like like any type of sexual impurity is right below murder and that includes just, that includes masturbation that includes having basically from my understanding anyway like sex in marriage that's outside of just procreating <laughs> right yeah exactly it's that's a bit how we were i mean like the masturbation was very heavily frowned upon um and then like i can read these rules but like you know it did vary a little bit from like when you were at the lower like if you were just kind of like one of the church goers and you come in and you do a course or whatever it the rules weren't like uh, they, they weren't so strict you can be in a normal boyfriend girlfriend relationship but when you enter the level of the c organization that like no longer hmm. is okay like he literally says the, so the 2d in the in this like scientology is um supposed to be like creativity but specifically creating like a family it's it's the sex and children dynamic basically so it's you know the whole family thing and so he wrote for us what he called the 2d rules and the, and when i say us i mean the c organization this is your like i said billionaires all that good stuff mm. and um he goes over like to make it clear what it is Two, um 2d couples may not live or sleep together under any circumstance unless legally wed legal marriages are required women have their own quarters men may not enter these and vice versa um Org members may not engage in any sort of 2d activities with public students or pcs so that's like just the public the general the people who come in, you know, pay to do their auditing and they pay to do their courses. So if you work in the Sea Org, you cannot have any any relations with them, married or not. Like it's a big fat no no. And then um, uh, new 2D relationships can't be created until like a divorce is completely final. And then he says no heavy petting is acceptable among unwed SO members. And a lot of times that would get into well, exactly what is the definition of petting? And that pretty much wound down to anything above like kissing the person. Or if you like hug them, you got to make sure you're not like doing any little grabby type mm, stuff. Like the good old fashioned Baptist side hug. <laughs> yeah, no grinding, you know, like no, n nothing mm. intimate, basically. You just got to be real, you know, like 12 year old boyfriend, girlfriend type yeah. sets. Hold your hands and real vanilla, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and then it says, um, the reasons for the above rules are obvious. We are a church and violation of these are out PR. This also avoids any possibility of the second dynamic impeding the forward progress of the Sea Org and Sea Org members in any way. The Sea Org is an elite group and therefore should have very high and optimum ethical standards. The orgs that go out 2D spin in and go to blazes it is the best way in the world to crash an organization or activity. I mean, look at, look at these Fortune 500 companies. Are you going to tell me that everyone in them did not sleep with somebody until they were married? Please. Please. <laughs> it's like, Get out of here. Be so fucking for real right now. <laughs> he literally says, if you want to blow up your life in an org, uh in your org go out to d so if you do it we know what you're trying to do so like heaven forbid you give in to the natural desires of a person you know and, and the, the repercussions were really bad he said the minimum penalty is being what he called beached which is getting booted or Be beached if you're lucky yeah that's like getting booted like you're getting kicked out Jenny, you didn't even shift. use that term during your interview with me, and I'm sorely disappointed because I can think of about 10 jokes I would have made with Beach. Are you kidding me? We got We have to have a redo because I'm so sick of this. Uh, this is, I'm telling you, this Scientology like is like, coming. There's, there's so many jokes to be made with the language. <laughs> I just, I just get the biggest kick out of it. Oh, You've enlightened me truly. <sighs> Yeah, no, uh, so uh, you'll either get kicked out or you go to what they call the Rehabilitation Project Force, which is like a reconditioning camp. You're segregated from everyone else. You're not allowed to speak to someone unless they speak to you. 
you run around wearing black, do heavy manual labor, you spend a portion of your day like trying to audit evil intentions out of each other. And, but you're like, you run everywhere you go. It's kind of like, some people describe it as like a gulag. Some people say it's like a reconditioning camp. It, it's not a pleasant experience. So that's, crazy. that's the, that's the penalty. So you're either out or you go to that program. Man, that'll make you never want to have sex again. Or at least for a while. <laughs> it makes a lot of people really <laughs> scared to do anything, like anything. Yeah. It, I mean, honestly, though, the, the levels of um, sexual repression people must have. I mean, when you get out of it, sure. But I just can't even. Well, I mean, honestly, not just with Scientology, but especially with Scientology. But there's when everything is so shamed and forbidden and there's so much guilt around having even a thought or a carnal desire of any kind even the men who you know want to get freaky with their legal wives like there's so much shame around it that it just builds this like crazy sexual repression i don't know it's insane um yeah, hold on we true. have a question what about walking okay. the plank did they do away with that completely i'm sorry so... is this freaking captain hook peter pan shit what is this <laughs> They were doing this thing called um, overboarding. So that wasn't necessarily like limited or restricted to a second dynamic or sex type of thing. It was uh, it just if they de deemed the punish like the punishment needed to be that for whatever it was you did. And at the time on the ship, you would get tossed overboard literally like into the ocean. And then when we were all on land, what they tried to do was have a version of that where they would either hose you down or dump a bunch of water on you with everyone oh, else you told around. Me, yes, you told yeah. me that part. I didn't Truly, know they took people in the freaking ocean and did this. What? Did it back? I guess when it was on the ship. So that would have had to have been in, I guess, like the 70s. I wonder if any, do you think anyone like drowned? I no, I doubt that, but um, uh, but still, I, I mean, don't know how much they're doing? There's got to be some mental damage that comes from that. Oh, I, would I mean, say. I would. I, I know would having say. water dumped on me like scarred me. I can't hardly think. There are so many punishments I did that to me didn't measure up to that to the way I felt when that happened to me. I can't. Yeah, that would be so degrading and humiliating and i just can't i i think about i think about our interview a lot actually <laughs> there's a lot of things that we talked about that sometimes will just randomly pop into my head and i'm like what in the it's all, actual yeah what what well actually hold yeah. on this this makes me feel a little bit better it says scientology is the fastest dying religion on the planet <laughs> let us hope let us hope and pray well I, I wish more of them were fast dying but I'll take me it. too. You know, you know, put them on the same playing field as the rest of us. Let people believe if they want, but have them be subject to the same things that the rest of the civilization is subjected to. Same like court things can be sued for mm -hmm. misinformation, can be sued for damages, you know, like go to jail for illegal activities. You know, like it's funny they create these rules around the sex and everything when you know, I know of sexual abuse and rape that occurred in there as well as at the daycare. Like I said, it mm -hmm. happened to me when I was seven and it just all gets swept under the rug. It gets, you know, they, they don't, they aren't quick to go send those people to jail, but they'll, because of the out PR aspect, public relations, they are going to try to harbor the person like, make it not come up somehow like they're gonna try to minimize it it's really yeah. funny to you know like if it's so severe they're willing to send somebody to a reconditioning camp then why aren't you taking some of these people and sending them to the to jail like where they should yeah. be or at least to a court of law and let the decision rest on their peers yep um i believe it's called oh, what is it called it's the it, with every religion and I think almost every state, if not all, but there's, um, there's a rule around clergy not having to legally report any type of abuse that they know about. 
So you could report it to your priest or the head of whatever organization or whatever clergy member. And by law in the United States, they don't have to report it. They're protected. They don't have to testify against it. They don't have to be honest about it. They can simply handle it internally. And that's legal, that, which blows yeah, that's my mind. Cool. That's like, like my thing is this, and I'll probably get some hate for this, you know, but I think all religions should be taxed. I don't think any of them should mm -hmm. be tax exempt. And then that way they're contributing to all of these services that the rest of us are. Yep. And, you know, and they get then subject to the same penalties that like, if you had a child molester out in the real world, he gets caught, he gets to sit up trial, and then he can go do his time in jail. But what, you know, just because it's a religion, quote unquote, they can go and not face that consequence for doing the exact same thing. And so that's where I'm just like, I don't agree yeah. with that. I don't care if you want to believe in Xenu and everything else, but like if you commit a crime or you lie to people, then you should have to face the same consequences that the rest of the world has to face. That's 100%. my opinion. hundred percent. Yes. Um, Kat, I, it, I think I mentioned that it does depend on the state for the clergy penitent. I believe it's the clergy penitent privilege law. I made a video on it a while back, but yeah, it, with most things, it does depend on the state. Um, and <laughs> they're very, very, very lax about it. Most states are. It's very unfortunate. It's because then instead of being prosecuted and taken away from children, they're usually just reassigned to other churches or other missions and continue to do what they continue to do, which is oh. freaking disgusting. I did. I did hear about that. Wasn't that like the first thing that the Catholic church had attempted to do was to move them to like other of their churches, just in like a different location. Oh yeah. They do or that all the time. Same with us. No, same with the Southern Baptists who just went, you know, they were, they've just been on the, not just, but in the past couple of years, really been on the news with the scandals and the SBC. It's like they just, their tactic, their like go to method is just moving people around, shuffling them around where, you know, they're, I don't know, they're still in the ministry, still around children, still in people's homes. Um, and there's just no accountability. So, to your point, I completely agree. If we're not going to tax them, then can we please have the same accountability and the same laws in place, you know? Um, but. Yeah. yeah, good, good stuff. That that's another soapbox I will get on, and we just simply don't have time for that <laughs> tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I think I would love to hear. I mean, obviously, like I would love to know what your your guy your rules were around like the subject of dating, marriage, and all that, and then. Obviously, I kind of when I mentioned it to you, I was very very curious about this training children i mean we i have my own story but yours sounds like whole other level oh god um yeah we can read some comments real quick if you want yeah um we need federal level laws for people in places of authority to report completely agree completely agree but you know is our federal government any better because they're known for their integrity right no i'm just kidding i'm not kidding um <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's completely ridiculous. Spirituality and business is a volatile combination. Amanda, you nailed it. You nailed it. Um, let me see. I'm sorting through some of these comments, guys. Um, yeah, um, Kat says, 2022, there were 33 states exempt that exempt clergy from reporting. So all they have to do is to move someone to a different state where it doesn't have to be reported. Problem solved. Love that. Um, let's see, Sam. Look, you can tell I don't have my glasses on because I'm like trying to read the comment on the screen. I'm like, let me just share it on the screen so I can see it. <laughs> the things women do for vanity. <laughs> Wait, what are we doing for vanity? I just forgot my glasses. You're not wearing your glasses. So <laughs> no, you're I just like... forgot them. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm on the opinion that any church is more business and religion. No, literally. It's the biggest money making business out there. Uh, yeah, I mean, hi, Sam. Since you're leaving us, churches. 
No, thank you uh, for being here. And definitely come back and watch. Thank you for hanging out, though. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, do we want to get into? I guess the ch ch child training BS. Um. Let me put something else up here on the screen. Um. Okay. So here's. Have any of you guys heard of this lovely book? To Train Up a Child by Mike and Debbie Pearl. So I've talked about it several times in several interviews. And actually, you know what? The very first video I ever shared on social media last July was about this book. And that's really what launched Instagram for me. Like I had like a thousand followers before I made that video. And now I think I have 100, 125,000. And it just grew really quickly because mainly because of that video and then the Ruby Frankie stuff. But in that video, it's short, but I talk about, you know, how I was raised with corporal punishment and how common that was for me to grow up with corporal punishment. And yeah, that was my experience and it was horrific, but it's really not that uncommon. In fact, I mean, people are still raising their children that way. I have siblings who are still using, you know, corporal punishment methods on their kids. And so, I mean, it just happens. It happens every day. Um, what doesn't happen every day are people talking about it and being very open about it because number one, it's really hard subject to talk about it. Like it feels so draining to me every time I talk about this damn book, even when I research mm. it, I just will have like, I'll just feel so exhausted afterwards. And it's just interesting how trauma still shows up in your bodies, like emotionally and physically um, when it comes to certain things that have been embedded into you know, your psyche. I'm going to see if I can share the screen here and just show people what the front of this book looks like. And then that might jog some memories. Um, yeah. I mean, maybe can even like a summary you so you don't that? have to get too, you know, mired by all the nastiness of it. Have you guys seen this? <clears throat> um, yes. Okay. Can I show this on there? Um, Tennessee, I'm guessing that's Tennessee, Jenny. And you know what? These people live and are from Tennessee. So it sounds like you need to make a road trip. No, I'm kidding. Um, I yeah, you know, I'm not too far from there. I was just in Tennessee two week, two, uh, two weekends ago. Dang. Well, <laughs> see, y'all have some work to do. Team up to the two Jennies in Tennessee. I haven't read the book, but from what I've what some have said about it, the book teaches, Jesus, I can't talk. That book teaches parents how to abuse their children. And it certainly does. It certainly, certainly does. It's not just about spanking your children. Um, it's about, uh, well, you know what? I'll do you one better. I will, I can read you just like little quick things from their book in their words. Let me make sure I'm not still screen sharing here, but then let me go open this. Uh, but yeah, so my parents were big time on big time on this book. They loved it. They used it. But um, three children have actually been, there's three deaths of children linked to this book because their parents use the same corporal punish, punishment methods that the Pearls write about in these books. Um, and so it's incredibly harmful. And I, I'm lucky that I'm still alive because <laughs> some of these children who this, you know, this book was used on or not. Um, okay. So, um, let me just see if I can find a quote here. I think I had some of them to share on screen. Um, okay. Let me read you this quote from his book because it's really about breaking their whole, their whole premise here is about breaking the child's will. Um, and he uses a lot of examples. Michael Pearl uses a lot of examples in his book, comparing children to dogs or horses or donkeys, just animals in general. And that's why he uses like to train up a child, because also that's a verse in the Bible, like at least the King James Bible that we used was train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Um, love that. I still have these fucking verses memorized. <laughs> um, like humans are animals, basically. Yes. Well, children and women, children and women are animals. Um, but so, for example, um, uh, here's a, a direct quote from their book, right? A proper spanking leaves children without breath to complain. If he should tell you that a spanking makes him madder, spank him again. If he is still mad, he desperately needs an unswayable authority, a cold rock of justice. 
And then he goes on to give a specific example about a strong, what they call strong-willed child. He says, quote, I could break his anger in two days. He would be too scared to get angry. On the third day, he would draw into a shell, into a quiet shell and obey. <laughs> yeah, like literally, the- literally breaking a child's will. And I have specific memories about my parents doing this. I, I don't know if it was on that interview you watched with Andrew Gold, but um, I know I'm pretty sure I've talked about it with cults to consciousness before. But like, um, like my parents would do that with infants, because even in that book, they also re- a six month old baby who has an accident or uses their diaper instead of letting you know they need to go to the bathroom. The the baby can't even like roll over, walk, anything like that, speak, of course, but are expected to, um, you know, be completely trained and not cry. And so my parents would do that with my younger siblings. I remember specifically, like even when it came to nap time, it would be like the, you're not allowed to cry. Like the baby's not allowed to cry at nap time because, you know, normally if you put the baby down for a nap or if they wake up from nap, they're going to cry in their crib. Like that's a baby being a baby is perfectly normal. How else are they supposed to communicate? But you know, they had just broken down my little, like my younger siblings so much that they would just, I I have like very vivid memories of going in there to check on my siblings to see if they were awake from their nap because they wouldn't cry. And, you know, they would just be like, I remember my youngest brother just like laying in the crib, just like, being a tiny baby and just like staring straight ahead, not crying, not moving awake, Ah. sleepy, you know, just waiting for someone to come in there and get them. And they were so proud of that. Like so proud of the fact that they had completely trained these little, you know, tiny babies to just dissociate and just check out, you know, that's, that's the thing. It's like, yeah, he says in there, like, what did he say? Um, on the third day, he would draw into a quiet shell and obey. Uh, yeah, that's what happens to abused children. <laughs> that's exactly what you can expect. <laughs> um, that was so crushing. Out of it. I even did a... Yeah, and they even recommend in their book, um, and this is what it has been linked to some of the, the deaths from the children, like those three kids. Um, what was I saying? She... Now you got me dissociated because oh, both these people. Sorry. But um, I, oh yeah, I did a, I did a, no, it's not, I'm just kidding. I'm just messing with you. Um, but I, I did a stitch on Instagram a while back because a video of theirs was going viral about uh, they were on stage, Mike and Debbie Pearl talking about, uh, you know, beating a child and what to do. And he has like this rod, this stick, and he's just like, and he has like this fake doll and he's just like beating the shit out of it <laughs> on stage. And Debbie's like laughing. <laughs> you know about it it's it's crazy but they recommend using pvc pipes cords it literally that it says to do that like they give diameters of pvc pipes to use in that book and mind you this book is still for sale on amazon amazon won't take it down there's been petitions to take it down they, even though amazon says they don't sell books that promote child abuse somehow this book is still up and when it's been linked to the pearls michael pearl even said Uh, Well, that's not our fault. They took what we were saying to the extreme because they didn't use the same diameter of PVC pipe that we said to use. Like, are you? Oh, okay. Yeah. The (laughs) diameter of the pipe. Yeah. Okay. Well, then I guess I guess it's fine. I mean, other than that. um, uh, Let me see. Yeah. Yeah, The pearls advocate using switches on babies. Yeah. Wow. Okay. They're bad. Um, and they also still make between one and a half and one point seven million dollars a year. I just thought that was oh, they do just not freaking amazing to hear. They do because they have a, they don't just sell that book. They have no greater joys ministries. Um, so they sell a lot of a lot of different books. Another really popular one of theirs, and it used to be good popular. Now it's like, yeah, Princess Buttercup. Hey girl, hey girl, good to see you on here. Um, um, uh, yeah, they. Like when they got into the media for, and it was really negative, he he posted to his people about, you know, the world is out to get them and make them, you know, look bad, blah, blah, because that's always the fucking sob story with these types of people. And so he had just all of his fundamentalists go on there and leave five star reviews. 
yeah, you know of what? Course. But the, but the thing is, you can't leave. I would say we could go spam it and do the opposite, but you can't leave a review unless you purchase the book. And I'm not giving that motherfucker a single penny. Uh, yeah, no, no. not a penny. Mm -mm. Um, yeah, see, we didn't start our training until six. So oh, you got us beat on that one. Pun intended. Yeah, we got beat for sure. <laughs> it's a horrible video. <clears throat> oh, uh, that is terrible. So the blanket training, fast. yeah, I think they, I think they talked about the blanket training on Shiny Happy People. If any of y'all have watched that documentary about the Duggars, because they use the blanket training also because the IBLP endorses the training methods of the pearls, right? And so the Duggars are IBLP, so they also use <sighs> the same methods. Uh, but blanket training yes. is basically like putting an infant, you know, in the center of the blanket and putting like toys or snacks on the outside of it and basically tempting the baby to to do what any human would do. And that's go for something that you like. But because you didn't give the baby permission to go for that item, then they get smacked or they get spanked <gasps> until they learn to just sit in the center of a blanket and deny themselves whatever they want. Oh my God, that, that like great? just destroys my heart. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so, so, um, so bad. And then what, something else I was going to say. Oh, I know what I was going to say. <clears throat> Let me see if um, I'm going to share. Well, you want to read some of these comments while I try to screen share? Um, uh, um, I can are try. you able to share from your end at all, or do I need to pop one up here? Um, well, here I can, I can't put them up on the thing, but I can read them from the YouTube chat. How about that? Okay. I'll start at the bottom and go to the top because I think I'm a little <clears> bit dyslexic. <throat> okay. So let's see. Little green. Um, let's see. Little green. I'm a secular homeschooler in Clearwater, Florida. I was shocked just a month or so ago to learn I had been on a Scientology Facebook homeschool group for years and never knew. Finally figured it out when they asked for wins every Thursday and had to watch a ton and Oops, Thursday. Had to watch tons of SPTV to figure that out. That's terrible. So SPTV is it's a collection of YouTube channels that are addressing the subject of Scientology um, from people who got out of it and escaped it or never ends who've got friends who are and stuff. Um, well, that sucks, Little Green. And that's weird that you were on that group. I'd be kind of curious some of the content that they Mm. <clears throat> um oh you ready now you want me to jenny's frozen for me uh oh spaghettios um oh you look normal to me can you hear me okay i think you're back for a second yeah no this is just a picture of the pearls from when they were younger so just, since we were just talking about them i just wanted to show for context this picture this is michael pearl with his kids when they were younger um so how they're dressed is how i also had to dress that's right long homemade dresses aren't those cute so why why what's no. the theory the or thought no. process behind that modesty everything's about modesty and not tempting men uh, and not drawing attention to your body you know you don't want anyone to know as a woman you have a shape heaven uh, forbid um so yeah. that makes that tracks um, because I just did an interview that I'm going to I'm going to post um, hopefully later this week or next week that I did with somebody who was in the IBLP um, and she did. She talked about um, like one time she was wearing a, a somewhat loose top, but it wasn't loose enough. And she got told by one of the elders that she had to, you know, loosen up her shirt so that, like it, she wouldn't be tempting men and she was only like 15 or 16 at yeah. this time like look yuck what is that guy even doing looking yeah at even like even that? that's a right and even this picture of mike and debbie pearl up on the screen like do you see how she has the white shirt under the pink one the pink one's not even low cut but we always had to layer shirts like that too it was always layered really? shirts like a shirt under a shirt you know um high neck long sleeve um because those elbows that that's what get men that's what'll get them better watch oh, out so it has to be past elbows 
it yeah i mean that's that's the that's the jesus way that's what's preferred for sure wow. um even like we would have to if we went swimming if we even went swimming even if i was just swimming with other girls i would have to wear like uh culottes or skirts with you know like really loose baggy pants underneath the full length skirt like i've i've been in the water in a jean skirt do you guys know how heavy jean <laughs> fabric gets <laughs> when soaked that's so it's bizarre. pretty bad it's pretty bad yeah this is so strange um, i mean we find... where i live there's a bunch of um east german baptists and they are similar to the amish um but not exactly like they actually drive cars and they have cell phones and things like that but the women put their hair in their little um bonnet ish type thing and they this they wear dresses too that you know like you say they come up to there they come past the elbow down to like their ankles and they'll have to wear them yeah and like my mom wore the head covering and i'd always be like please god like i don't want to wear one of those like i just don't like but you're supposed to like wear them and that's kind of where the amish thing comes in is because we didn't have electricity or running water we lived like way out in the middle of nowhere so even though we like my parents use freaking whatever to beat the shit out of us and we never had health care anything like that right no one knew we existed because we lived out in the middle of nowhere and we were homeschooled so <laughs> it was just like complete oh. completely oh, wow. off the grid but like the head coverings was really about um like when you reach the age of accountability and then you're saved quote unquote saved then as a woman you're supposed to wear the head covering it's also a sign of submission gross that word makes you want to throw up <laughs> oh is it um that's weird so gross yeah no uh, electra you're you're exactly right. it is a drowning hazard which maybe would explain why i had like an insane like irrational fear of drowning for a very long time like going over bridges i would completely hyperventilate panic attack so <laughs> good times um just, if a man can't wow. contain himself i think <laughs> facts facts and not to mention the ankles and elbows of children because that will that rule was in place for girls little girls too it wasn't just grown women with you know more mature bodies it's um, and speaking of that, I mean, I, I want to show y'all real quick. Um, uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. See, I keep getting I feel like, here. so I feel like, like the area of like oppression or in the like real physical world where I end, it was more like mentally so that you would be harder on yourself, yeah. more self-policing. You'd be like fighting yourself on these things where you had the real world, like you're wearing things in here, like you're just cut off from any possibility of it happening because you're like wearing layer on layer on layer on layer and you know, all this beating and like horrible stuff like that, where like it's all physical and ours was like being done mentally. It's it that's sort of what yeah. it sort of feels like. Yeah. And, and, and I think that is kind of the question here is like, Ooh, who had, you know, whose cult was crazier? Uh, they're both, <laughs> I think they're pretty equal. They just use two different approaches. Want you to, like you said, one physical and one more on the mental side, but they're both freaking terrible. Um, right. and princess buttercup, I just saw your comment here. She, so nice. Um, first of all, princess bride is my favorite movie at all times. And I can quote that bitch front to back. So, uh, <laughs> I love the name, but also she, uh, I just left the Mormon church in August. Yes. Congratulations. I'm wow. glad you're out and I hope you're doing so much better now. And that just, I love to hear that. Um, I'm happy for you. I'm happy. Yay. That, that makes me happy. Um, and then let me see here. And then this is the other book that the pearls are really known for, because, but this one's quote unquote authored by Debbie, the wife, but, um, God, when I tell you some of the freaking disgusting sex stuff that's in here, and I don't mean like freaky sex, I'm talking like abuse, marital rape, like oh. um, they they share about their wedding or she shares, I believe it's her in this book. I don't think it's Michael in his other book um, because he did a book called Created to Need a Help Meet. So it's for the dudes. Um, and so... 
um so yeah um but, but in the in it they describe one of them describes their wedding rape night, is and okay? it's pretty terrible oh okay well yeah Sorry, let I me I, I think my delay <laughs> you're gonna hate you're no you're gonna hate you're gonna hate what i what i have to read to you here um uh, okay so sudden aggressive out can you are you good are you um I'm not okay. delayed yeah, anymore i hope because i'm just gonna stop reading shit. okay yeah um in their words first of all let me read this one by debbie pearl this one just pissed me off. It's not it's not the worst by by any means. But she said, quote, men are highly attracted to smiles. That includes your husband. Bitch. Bitch. That makes me want to never smile again. Men are highly attracted to smiles. That's just as bad as the men are who are like, you should smile. You're cuter when you smile. Like, <laughs> I will frown for the rest of my life. One of the people I used Thank to work you. with in. Oh, anyway, sorry. I was going to say one of the people I used to work with told me one time, you know, <laughs> it wouldn't hurt if you would wear makeup some. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> like the audacity. Why did I didn't ask? You think I give a shit? What do you think? <laughs> um, okay. So at one point, Debbie Pearl encourages a young mother whose husband routinely her and threatened to her with a kitchen knife. So Debbie Pearl advised this woman to, quote, stop blabbing about his sins and win him back by showing him more respect. So this man tries to unalive his wife with a knife, like, be, you know, beating the shit out of her. And Debbie's advice is to... <clears throat> Just be nicer to him, you know, and quit being difficult and blabbing about his sins. Do you know you're going to win him back by showing more respect? And then according to her also, sudden aggressive outbursts are part of what it means to be a man. And the wisest way to handle an aggressive husband. This pisses me off so bad. The wisest way to handle an aggressive husband is by not taking personal offense. By not taking personal offense. Quote, avoid provoking him. Instead of, I, has he tried not being an abusive piece of shit? See that? What? Wow. I mean, that makes me think of this interview I just did because the girl, she was in the IBLP, the Shiny Happy People. And she said that, that uh, there's a lot of like marital abuse that occurs within that like organization. And she said, that's what they, mm -hmm. they tell them is that, that God gives them grace to forgive the husband and that mm -hmm. that it's basically on them to stay with the person because they're the ones who are able to give grace for these outbursts and stuff yep and i mean it's even advised in there in the iblp and the pearls that if your husband is um saying your children I, I might I might have the quote in here saved somewhere, but basically you need to like you need to stand by your husband and just pray for him and then and hope on a prayer that maybe he'll go to jail until the children turn 18. And then um, but you should still take your children to the to prison to visit their dad who S aid them. Mm, my God, no. Yeah. yeah. Um yeah, she's a real freaking, um, yeah, okay, actually, here's the exact quote, but I, I pretty much paraphrase it. Uh, quote, if your husband ever sexually handles your children, call the authorities, testify against him, and pray he gets at least 20 years in prison so that the children will be grown when he gets out. Visit him there and be an encouragement to him. Get him books and tapes on good Bible teaching and let him see the children three or four times a year in the prison visiting area. I don't know where this comes from, apparently, but uh, children heal better from sexual assaults when they know the perpetrators, even their fathers, are punished for it. They're also less likely to follow in his steps. Show no. me what study has proven any of that. What the fuck? Yeah, how about getting the child some help? How about, yeah, the person for sure needs to go to jail. Like, no question. But, but you're going to drag oh. that poor child oh, to go visit him hell no 
I'm I like it's just it's, it's so infuriating. It's so infuriating. Um, and then I had another one. Let me find this other one for you. Um, and then when it comes to uh, so this is another thing from Debbie about um, counsel. Like this is Debbie's counsel advice to a woman um, who's married to a man who's insensitive or like only wants sex in her words, because women are just like not physical creatures. We're emotional and men, you know, just have a natural urge. <clears throat> but so this is directly from her book. If I were to counsel the wife, um, she would say some men are so insensitive that the only affection they ever show is through physical sex. That being the case, if a wife should, excuse me, if a wife should be resistant to her husband by holding out sex until he meets her spiritual or social needs, there will never be any resolution. So don't withhold sex um, if your husband's being abusive. Um, if she were just to accept his shortcomings and respond sexually, there's a better chance that through sex, he will come to love her in a deeper way. Um, if not, then the woman will still benefit by enjoying sex herself. Why deprive yourself just to prove a point that may never be appreciated? So manipulation. I, I just can't believe that these books are but, still being sold. And bought. And bought and sold and bought and sold. Yep. Yep. And people out here really feeling good about leaving that five star review on Amazon. <coughs> these people are unreal. Crusty old motherfuckers. Um, they just pissed me off. I thought this was hilarious. I've got to share this. This is a screen grab from, um, this is a screen. I have to show this. This is so funny to me. Okay. Made my day. If you watch shiny, if you watch shiny, happy people, they talk about the Duggars briefly. And this is, um, this came from that. <laughs> Wait, what and I couldn't agree more. <laughs> oh, here. Michael and Debbie Pearl. <laughs> snaps <laughs> ah, yes. uh, yeah exactly wow that's exactly right it's like well reward him if you'll just shut up and just give him sex then that's probably the solution but even if it's not the solution and he continues being abusive well at least you got sex out of it yay <laughs> Yeah, I mean, at one point we had a book called Marriage Hats. It got removed because it was written by L. Ron Hubbard's wife instead of him. But it did, it did talk about, um, it did talk about that that it's one of the wife's duties to, you know, provide that for the man, and yeah, you know, not so much whether you want it or you guys, you know, whether your relationship is good or bad or anything. That's not the point. It's just it's one of your duties. Mm hmm. And this is what Anna Duggar is reading. You're exactly right about that. Because what I just read from Debbie um, was one of her responses to the whole Anna Duggar situation, which if you guys don't know, she has stood by her husband who is in prison right now for essaying their, his siblings and I believe some other um, young girls and also possessing some really disgusting, nasty CSA on his computer that the feds found. And so, yeah, she's still standing by him. Um, I've seen in the recent news that she's gone to Texas to visit him with the kids in prison, um, which I feel like should be illegal. If if people are in, why are people in prison for CSA or like child abuse at all and are still allowed to see those children? What the? Whew. I'm getting I'm getting it's, real it's, angry over here. Um, I know it's yeah. I didn't know this. Just, I did not know this. What the? I recently what found out that marital rape was only federally criminalized in 93. What? Oh, I'm not. Should I be surprised? Probably not. I probably shouldn't be surprised. Yeah, I guess not. But but still. Welcome to the United wow. States, baby. Um, and then I just, yes, Jenny, other Jenny, <laughs> um, that's also in a lot of these teachings and books is like, if, if your husband steps, excuse me, if your husband steps out on your marriage or he essays another 
woman or children, then that's your fault because you're not meeting his needs in some way. You're obviously not making yourself available to him. So I, I think I saw a comment earlier, but I didn't put on the screen. I don't think maybe, but um, yeah, it's always the woman's fault. Always. Yeah. And you're I either know, tempting like, the man. Or you're yeah, not. Yeah, I know. In where I, where like in the Sea Org, I know women who, like their husbands, were having to get off the over. They call it an over. It's a sin of masturbation, and then the wife of that person gets pulled into ethics as well, and she gets blamed for yeah, like making him resort to doing something that was sinful because she wouldn't just you know do her job and give him sex. Will they ever let us rest for God's sake? Can we just exist without being the fucking problem and the scapegoat for everything? <laughs> Corn Freak says they treat a man with a normal sex drive like an animal who has to have satisfaction when the urge hits and they raise their young men that way. You might call them a freak on a leash. Any corn fans will get that. <laughs> I'm sorry. It was just it was the opportunity presented itself. I had to make that joke. Sorry. Um, <laughs> completely agree. Um, let's see. Is this true, Jen? Jenny? I thought the Sierra couldn't be married. No, you can definitely be like, you have to be married. If you want to have any relations beyond like kissing somebody, you have to be married. And so there is a pretty significant divorce rate there because people will date for like three or some odd weeks and end up getting married because they want to be able to have sex and then it won't work out just like a boyfriend and girlfriend mm -hmm. type thing. And it doesn't work out. So they get divorced and then they get married again and get divorced and get married again. But the, what they can't do is they can't enter a relationship with a public person. So a Sea Org can only be in a relationship or married to another Sea Org member. Everything else is off limits. Mm. Got to keep in the family, baby. Um, and this is so true since, uh, it's impossible for Anna to be a child again. I'm guessing she isn't what does it. She isn't what does it for him? Meaning Josh, her husband, Ugh, that makes me want to throw up too. Oh. But so true. So true. But what is she supposed to do? Like go to the church officials and be like, I'm sorry, I'm not a literal child anymore. So my perverted freaking disgusting ass husband doesn't, I can't do it for him because I'm not a child. What the fuck? It's so gross. Um, yeah. Like Scientology defending Danny Masterson for SA. The owner of La Poubelle defending Danny Masterson. Yeah. So that's, um, yeah, like that, that was one of my big arguments was like here. I knew this stuff was occurring back when I was seven, you know, years old with like what happened to me and some of my friends. And then even later as a teenager, I had another friend who got raped and like she actually was the one who got kicked out, not the person who did it to her. Everything else got hidden and swept away. And then the whole Danny thing starts and they do like they go even a whole step further where not only are they like protecting him, but they're like really protecting him. They're hiding evidence. They're not turning it over. They're denying it. They're um uh, harassing the victims of Danny Masterson and hiring people to harass them. Like they went like to just the total extreme when they really should have just given to the court. Here's everything you need to know. Here's all of his confessions. Here's what he said and here's what he did. And yes, try him, you know, and whatever. And instead they protected him. And the thing about the La Pabelle for anyone who I guess doesn't know is that was a restaurant that Danny used to frequent a lot. It was probably like one of his favorite places. But unfortunately, that was where he um, administered a date rape drug to one of the victims. And that woman who owns that place is super tight with Danny. And so she actually showed up in court for him every single day mm. to defend him and then wrote a letter to the judge asking for leniency after he was sentenced. It's just disgusting in every way. Like, what is what is the defense on that? Like, how do you in good conscience defend even a friend who's done something like as a woman? I don't care if it's my best fucking friend, a dude no. who's like, but if he he's essayed someone, why would I defend that as a human being, as a woman? Absolutely not. I don't. What am I going to write to the judge? Like, I what does she say? Do you have any idea? I'm genuinely. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, there are actually several people, several people who wrote letters to the judge saying kind of they know he's now been sentenced. 
but they were asking for leniency on thing because he had um, uh, two counts of, I think it was two counts of 30 years to life or something like that um, for e each one. And so these people were asking to, for like basically to for the judge to consider giving him a reduced sentence. And like Ashton Kutcher wrote one, Mila Kunis wrote one, the owner of La Pabelle wrote one, of course his parents, um, his sister Alana Masterson, Jordan Masterson, both are actors. Um, Chris Masterson, like all these people wrote these freaking letters on his behalf. It was disgusting. Yeah. Did, did they grant him leniency or is that one of the, is it one of those things where we'll have to wait until like he goes before the parole board and I don't know how that works. Yeah. It's case, not even up but... to the judge. She even, she even said, she goes, this is not up to me. She said, but even if it was, she said, I want to grant it. He's a dangerous man. He needs to go to jail. Exactly. Why would they let him out early so he can offend again before he's old and decrepit? Like, yeah, what? like I think he's why would you want him out on the streets? For, I think they said he's like eligible for parole in like twenty something years or something like that. He'll be pretty old then, so hopefully he can't even get the little thing up. Yeah, Corn Freak says um, the nasty needs to be called out, and y'all are doing that. Yeah, damn right. You're damn right. Sure. Uh, it, no C or children either. <clears throat> what I'm about not sure that? what that refers yeah, to. Me. Maybe no children in the C or. Um, I thought I'm you. Sure. I thought you mentioned something about that on our on the interview we did. Um, I thought you said something about like now they're if you're in the C org, you're not allowed to have. You're not allowed to be pregnant or something? Yeah, so they got rid of the daycare and they got rid of the cadet org. So the only thing that could happen now is if they're recruiting young people into the Sea Org itself directly. Um, so they're not raising children in there anymore, but they could, I guess they could recruit somebody in there to work the ridiculous hours we were working and be subject to all the punishments we were. I don't know. I think. I heard, and I don't know if it's true. I heard that they like upped the age to like 16 or 17 or something, but I don't think anyone under 18 should be recruited, period. You know, they should be a consenting adult first. I wonder what that's really with any religion. That's, that's my um, controversial yeah. opinion is that <laughs> no child should be taught any religion and, you know, they get to choose when they're 18. Um, you know, no brainwashing before 18. That's a good rule of thumb. Uh, Princess Buttercup says Dan and his sister also have a wine label and vineyard. I didn't know that. Yeah, Do you know what the vineyard the is? I he's Google got the it, vineyard and she's got the winery. Because I want to make sure I don't, I live in a dry county. It's not like I can, I just hit my <sighs> hand on there. But I live in a dry county. I can't even go buy alcohol, which is just, <laughs> welcome to the Bible Belt. Yeah, but I want to make sure I don't accidentally buy their uh, shit. Um, I forget the name. Um, uh, who who's the one who put that? Oh, um, oh, Princess Buttercup. Can you put the the name of it into the chat? I forget the name of it. I forget what it's called now. I'm googling it too. <laughs> um, try it. Might be um Al Alana Elaine Alana Masterson's wine company. Hmm pretty sure it's his sister who's the owner of that i wonder if it lost a lot of money after all of this Here, like being in the news she wrote it, fallen grape wine more like falling from grace wine you know what i mean <laughs> nobody nobody yeah. <laughs> oh, i'm gonna make a fake no, i don't want a pity laugh don't pity laugh at my jokes <laughs> like the uh, culty version of dad jokes I'm, I'm here for it someone left a comment on one of my videos a couple weeks ago and they were like i love your dad or they said are you a dad because you're you have dad jokes and i was like yes thank you i am <laughs> i'm more of a dad <laughs> with these jokes <laughs> um well, I'll make sure I don't fall for that wine label. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, I'm done. I'm done. I promise. Um, you just moved to ground. I'm glad projects. someone put it in the chat because I did. It's a matter of time, man. <laughs> My day's coming. Um, I found one more thing I was going to share about the Duggars, not to harp on this anymore, but then I'll be done. Uh, we've been going a while. I didn't realize how long we've been going, but go us. 
Um, let me see if I can find it here. Where are they at? Okay. Actually, do I want to share this? I'll share it. Um, and this is Debbie talking about, you know, doing the deal with your husband. Um, well, I think someone had written in, like, for context, someone had written to Debbie and was like something about their husband having an affair with their with her with the husband's office assistant or secretary. Um, but yeah, she's saying your your very sweetness and thankfulness towards your man will make that cheap office hussy feels like she's beneath your class. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> pick me, girl. And your innocence and confidence will cause all the men in the office to be angry at the woman for her underhanded advances. It will fortify your husband's spirit. So instead of just being like, your husband just shouldn't fuck the, your secretary. She's like, no, you got to come in there with sweetness and thankfulness and your innocence. And it'll make all the office angry at, at this, that this hussy for trying to sleep with your husband. And then your husband will feel fortified in his spirit. Be, this is, this gets me be creative and aggressive in your private intimate times. She's she like, you go, you got to get that. Dick. You got to get it um aggressively keep keep him drained i'm sorry keep him drained at home so he won't have any sexual need at work i'm sorry but that's not how <laughs> cheaters work that's not no ma'am no ma'am oh, if you God. feed if you feed him well if you um if you feed him well emotionally and sexually her cooking won't tempt him and in bold print god is on your side fight and win like she really thought she did something with this too. She really thought she That's did just, something. This is fucking crazy. Just um, really in her book, I I remember this one piece. I don't have a screen share for it, but um, she even says that having wet hair around a man is a no no because wet hair is tempting and sexual. <gasps> what? Someone else I interviewed said the same thing, and I was like, what? Yeah, I have, I have, uh, like, I think I have like a five or six part series way down on my Instagram. I'm wearing a red shirt in it, but, um, if you guys go look for it, but yeah, it's like a four or five part series and it's about this fucking book and the pearls and like she, the, the theories that she's, she has and the things that she says, it really makes me think she's closeted. And I'm not just saying that, like, I think. Like you're, she doesn't want, she says that like women should not even be just around other women because of like temptation and and stuff. And I'm like, you're not going to be tempted if you're not attracted to them. <laughs> Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> I like this comment. That's what my parents did. And I'm so grateful. So this is in reference to what Kat said about trying to teach their kids about all religions and letting them choose. I'm of the same mindset. That's what I do with my offspring. Like you can have all the facts. I'm not telling you not to be religious. I'm not telling you to be religious. I'm not saying be atheist. Um, you get to decide because I've taught you to, you know, if, if I've done my job, then you know how to think critically and then you can decide. Um, yeah. yeah. They encouraged me that's to go to church and to learn mean, to learn, but they're atheists. No, go ahead. Oh, I was no, I, um, I was just saying I'm still on a delay. I'm sorry, everybody. But uh, yeah, that's how he was raised. So we're, I mean, our fathers are brothers and I was raised in Scientology, but he was actually raised with like being kind of introduced to different religions, but not they weren't part of any of them. And it was like the the idea would be that he would be allowed to choose. And he, you know, he chose to remain atheist yeah. because that's just what he felt. But, you know, it makes sense to me to allow a child to explore and then make their own decision. A hundred percent. See, I knew I wasn't the only one. I knew I, knew I wasn't the only one about this. <laughs> Debbie Please. has got, got some things to s like, come on, it's it's 2024. Just step out of that closet, baby girl. It's okay. We love we love you. Yeah. Here. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Everyone will love you for it. <laughs> In reference to Debbie. <laughs> Doing his <laughs> I mean, I, 
Do any of you guys, I don't know if any of you guys watched The Office, but this this reminds me of when Michael Scott says, you cheated on me when I specifically asked you not to? <laughs> like, how could you? <laughs> I have watched that this whole like oh, series man. from beginning to end, like over and over. It's really pathetic. I've seen it probably five times all the way through. Same. It's just play. It's just background. We play in the background all the time. We quote it constantly. <laughs> it's that I always say. I'm like that's the only culture white people have is the office. It's it's sad but true. Um, welcome back, Melissa. Glad you could make it back. Yeah, we're still going. We're on some shit. So welcome. <laughs> yeah. Um, what kind of questions do you guys have? Because we've talked about a lot of stuff. We've gone back and forth. It's been great conversation. But do you guys have any commentary, any questions? Yeah, this great is minds fun. And if you don't, let's that. see, what was I going to say? <laughs> um, I mentioned this early on, but if you guys, uh, I've we've referenced the interview Jenny and I did together a while, uh, I'll say a while back, several weeks ago. I linked it in the description of this video that you can you can go back and watch. Um, I think the thumbnail says religious mafia on it. Super interesting. One of my favorite interviews actually so far. Um, they've all I've loved every interview I've done, but um, this one was just especially interesting and just eye opening and crazy and great conversation. Um, yeah, it was so much so, fun doing yeah, that. Go back and watch and that. And then. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> and I was just saying it was just so much fun. It was like it was just one of those things, too, where a lot of it's very heavy. But like even as I was saying some of these things and just now being out and saying it out loud, I just I, even I was laughing at myself at some of the things I was saying, because before I would never have laughed at it. But now it just sounds so out there. And but it's also what inspired yeah. me to think, you know what, because it was we were covering so many topics and such a, like a well, it was kind of a long interview, but it was so many topics. I was like, you know what, we might need a deep dive and maybe do yeah. some comparisons. I know. I feel like we could do this every couple of weeks and have plenty to talk about because there's oh. so much. You guys are so sweet. These comments are so nice. Uh, Thank you all. I love y'all. Y'all are the best. <laughs> um, Angie, Angie, welcome. It's good to see your face on here. It's okay that you're, you're a little late and you miss some of it. I'm just glad you're here. It's good to see, like, it's always fun to see people who show up in the comments, like the real ones who are always there in the comments supporting and having great, you know, things to say about interviews or just like my one-off videos. It's really fun to see their faces and get to kind of interact in this way. So I appreciate you guys being here. Oh, you know what? I haven't even, I put it on Instagram. I haven't, because I'm a slacker, I haven't put it on YouTube, but I actually, I've been putting shit into a Patreon for months and I was just like, didn't want to pull the trigger on it because I was like, mm, like I just wanted it to be better, but being a perfectionist, it's never going to be good enough. <laughs> um, oh. But anyway, you can join Patreon for a dollar if you guys want to. Um, there's lots of behind the scenes stuff. I do early release episodes on there. Uh, yeah. Behind the scenes stuff, uh, personal stuff memes you know musings what the fuck ever um so yeah it, for right now it's a dollar a month if you guys want to hang out with me a little bit more you get you get that it's i think i put it in the video description too so go check that out pretty please and follow jenny jenny yes. what's your channel i would i should have put it's, it in there to um i could put it in there it's at at cults and atheists like a and d atheists at cults and atheists and uh yeah it's pretty because much you do like it with my your channel husband, right huh Wait, what? You do uh, cults and atheists with your cousin, who's the atheist, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we interview. And it's interesting because me having been in and him as like never a part of any of this, we are interviewing. He's interviewing me first on my story so I can get it all out. We kind of bit, we're, we're like a little pegged on that, but we started doing interviews of other people. And it's like his questions come from his perspective and mine come from more within. So it makes this interesting sort of mm -hmm. contrast. And um, and I like giving just the, you know, average and ordinary person a chance to tell their story. It's really it's really pretty cool. And it's it's enlightening. And I hope also people are able to watch these things and realize they need to stay away. Yeah, Wait, we should have been. Uh oh, 
um i think it's interesting in a lot of these these power controlled like high control high demand groups there's so many under like similar undercurrents to them um like some of the more superficial rules are different but underlying there's a lot of similarities and it's oh yeah scary. very much so like some sometimes it just it's mind-blowing it's like the things that are the same between them yeah yeah and i've had um I've had, yeah, I've had it reversed. I've had Scientologists say that about Jehovah's Witness and then vice versa. So uh, yeah, definitely, definitely y'all are doing something. I don't know if y'all should be yeah. doing that, but y'all doing something. <laughs> I kind of feel like um, the Scientology stole some stuff from the Jehovah's Witnesses since they've been around since 1800s. And then I feel like the IBLP and R. and Harbor were like in cahoots with each other. I mean, they're, the parallels of the, these organizations is like insane. I mean, she, this woman even talked about getting $50 a week. That's how much we were paid in the Sea Org on a good good week. We got 50 bucks. I mean, it was just weird to hear that. And we also do the seeing like what our basic confessional that we do all the time in there is called writing your overts and withholds, which is like your sins mm -hmm. and the withholding, withholding of them. And so, and you have to write whether it's an overt of omission or overt of commission. And they do the same thing, sins of omission and sins of commission. It's bizarre. I was like, what? Yeah, someone's, someone's plagiarizing once again. Um, and you know, in the Mormons, like journaling is such a big deal for Mormons as well. And like right. journal, not just journaling, but like sins and all of that stuff. Like. It, which is interesting. Like if you guys don't want to be found out and you don't want to go to the authorities and you want to just have all of this, you know, deniability, then why are you writing it all down? Yeah. That's what got Ruby Frankie in so much trouble. I mean, she had, and I'm, I'm going to do a live on Ruby Frankie here soon. Um, just going through her journal pages, you guys, if y'all are into, or have y'all been following Ruby Frankie, Jody Hildebrand, but the cops just released like 60 pages of her handwritten journal, like detailing how she tortured her children um yeah it's pretty horrific um sunny ray says silent watcher but i was born a southerner hi girl because i'm in the south too uh race to think for myself and you are helping me make sense of where i come from and why bad things happen i hate that bad things happen fuck those people um and Cheryl says i was not brought up in a cult but i've really learned yeah and that's what that's i think awesome. that's the a really great thing about all of this like just doing what we do with these channels is like it you don't have to be raised in a cult to glean something from it or mm -hmm. identify with a cult or religion or really anything it's just again even controlling relationships have a lot of similarities yes. to cults because it's the same it's, tactics exactly i want to say like abusive yeah. relationships and like abusive family situations hold a lot of very similar characteristics to cults Ooh, wait, you got new names in the temple. I'm Judith. Hey, Judith. What's up, girl? I like I'm Princess sorry. Buttercup better. Wait, did you, do you choose your name in the temple or do you get assigned the name? And if so, what do you guys think my name would be? Because I've mentioned this before. I'm the only one of uh, eight siblings who does not have a biblical name. All of my siblings were given Bible names. And then I was like, you guys wanted me. You guys wanted me to be the center because I have a heathen name. Um, oh, it was What's assigned. That? Interesting. Ooh. What's your heathen name? Okay. No, I have a heathen name. Kendra is not... I keep hitting my chin. Um, Kendra is not biblical, but I need, you know, if I, if oh, I were I assigned a name, I, I, I want to know what it was. Yeah. And that's what, Hey Judith, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not going to call you that. <laughs> um, the journaling is what got Ruby Frank. Exactly. I think we were saying that at the same time. So great minds think alike. Um, Lilith, you know what? I accept that Cheryl. Thank you so much. I, it is, it is done. This is my name now. You guys must call me this. Um, Amanda says that uh, the temple assigns names and everyone that day gets to say, what really? They're like, we're going to, we're going to make this easy on us. <laughs> so it's almost like what? So that's like having a graduation date. Like it's something that ties you all sense. together. Like, I don't even get that. What? Oh, hold on. It is. They have a list that goes by date and that's the name you get. They have a website. 
But you why? Guys, okay, why do I why do I want to Google this and put in my birth date and see what the name was? Like do on it, my do mine. or closest to, and that's gonna be my name. Or maybe one of you guys can do it for me because I don't want to be like MIA over here. But oh, that would be hilarious. We should see that. <laughs> um, hold on. This is all so funny to me. I'm sorry. Like, my mom, I did not know this, and I don't know why I'm hyper fixating on this, but I just think it's so interesting. Um, Judith, not Judith, says, My husband is Adam. I'd have loved Lilith. And then she, uh, she said, Men are not allowed to tell wives their new names. Like, are you not going to hear it eventually, though? I just don't even understand the purpose of this. Am I dense? I don't get it. I don't get why you do this. Yeah. Okay. So it's the day you go through the gym ball. I get that. I just, I want my own name, man. I'm feeling really left out because in the IBLP, you don't get new names. And I'm just honestly feeling a little um, singled out by this. And it's a little hurtful. <laughs> I'm just I just, um, I just don't get it though. Like why? <laughs> Oh my god, Why corn do you freak. Have this shit, honestly. Corn freak, you should email me because I think we need to talk about JW and Scientology. Like for real. Just throw Did that out there. Did you just get a guest out of this? You just get a you're stealing one of my people. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but wives have to tell their husband theirs. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if, if the because it makes sense. Why wouldn't we have to do everything for our husband? Um, oh yeah. Um, my husband grew up Mormon and after 10 years of marriage, I'm still learning new wild Mormon lore. <laughs> I believe it. There's some wild shit, some wild shit. And then like, you could, and then also there's like the, there's like the usual overarching beliefs of any given religion, like Jehovah's Witness, Mormon, IBLP, but then like in your local groups or church, they kind of have like their own culture and beliefs or rules or whatever. So it's like, that's, there's so much lore around every single one because there's all these different variations. You can never yeah. learn it all. That's pretty crazy. It's no, insane. shut up. Shut up. Hands. See, now I see why people get drawn into cults because this sounds fucking cool. I want hand signals and handshakes. What? You know what it is though, Kendra? It's that I get it. like it's that like love bombing camaraderie thing that's they, they use 100%. as one of the draws. Like people want to be part of something. And then next thing you know, they're in there and they're doing all the crazy. And then anyone who goes outside of that's automatically the bad guy, the outcast, the enemy. So then it's easy to pit people, a whole group of people against one outlier. Not when you see the outfits. Oh God. Okay, yeah. If it's not cute, I'm I'm out. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, where's your triple shirt? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as you can see, I've been shedding layers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of a whore now, is what they would I say. I just had the I'm image just... of Will Ferrell on Old School running down the street. We're streaking. <laughs> yes. Who's streaking? Or like. <laughs> They're coming. Or Will Ferrell on T Talladega Nights when he gets, in, he's like, I'm on fire. Help me, Tom. And it's funny. He goes, help me, Tom Cruise. Help me, Oprah Winfrey. Help me, Jewish God. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. So you guys funny. are awesome. Anything else? Man, we've been going like an hour and 40. But um, you know what? I'll we just... had some making up to do because we had a little bit of a late start. So I apologize. Yeah. Yeah. We... We, we got technology lives. got the better of us. You guys, look who just popped in. Oh, my it's my goodness. baby Hi. mama. It's my baby mama. I'm, I'm totally a fan. Congratulations on your baby. <laughs> uh, Shalise, you guys just had a baby on um, St. Patrick's Day. So the 17th of March. And that baby is cute. That's a cute baby. That's a precious baby. And also, um, uh, Shalise and Jonathan have had me on their channel multiple times and have just been phenomenal and are one of the reasons that I'm even doing this today. And so big thanks to them. They're amazing, wonderful humans. And I'm sure most of you probably follow them by now. And if not, why not just go do that? <laughs> Her interviews are so, so Thank good. You. I've listened to so many of them. I can't believe I never heard yours. 
you popped up into my feed on the whole um, Ruby th thing. And so I was listening to you and then I found something else of yours. And then <laughs> that's when I ended up talking to you. But. Oh, you guys. I'm like the evil godmother now. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they're, they have um, a, a little wiener dog named Oscar and that is my soul child if that's a thing oh they're just they're the best they're the best and i'm going to costa rica with them you guys i don't know if they have any spots still left but um some freaking sweet ass person paid for me to go to costa rica with them and the group of people and so i'm super stoked to do that in a couple months that's awesome how fun yeah what is that trip exciting. anyways when hmm. did you ask uh hmm. she shalice <laughs> when is the trip <laughs> I think it, <laughs> um, she said they have four, four spots. So, hey, y'all heard oh. it here first. Y'all heard it here first. I better be on that birth certificate. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> um, I So I used to work with this Mormon girl. Like I used to work at a children's hospital and my like office mate was this Mormon woman. Um, and she was my age at the time. So like late 20s, early 30s. Um, and she would, she was dating a guy at the time, but you know, she would talk to me about, cause she knew I was a heathen. The, the vibes were there. They just flow off of me. And so she would tell me all of like how she was waiting until marriage, but she was, um, engaged to a guy who was not a virgin. He wasn't Mormon. He was converting for her. And then I had to Google all kinds of stuff like soaking. Don't. What? It's my recommendation. What's oh, that? Actually, hey Jenny, you should go. Go you should go Google that. Okay. You should go Google <laughs> stoking. Um, and uh, Shalee says it's Labor Day, Labor Day week, end of August, early September. Oh <clears throat> shoot! Uh, if only I knew earlier. So, I have a trip just before and just after. Oh well, cancel them. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. That would have been fun, though. Well, y'all are awesome. All of y'all are awesome. We've been going for probably way too long now, but this was super fun. Probably. And I know. We love having everyone on the... here. It's been great. It's been really fun. And y'all are patient with us because this is, like I said before, I've done lives on um, Instagram quite a bit, but not on YouTube. This is only my second one on YouTube, so I'm still kind of working out the kinks of this platform. So I appreciate y'all's patience um, as we figure everything out. Go follow Jenny. Follow me. Yes, and Join follow me on Patreon if you if you wanna. Wait, say your, yeah. say then, your um, channel name too for the people on my side. Um, yes, it's Culture Shock with Kendra, but on, on YouTube it's at Kendra Lee Bryan. Um, I think I have it maybe on a banner here. Um, and then you can also, if you want to tell your own story on my podcast, you can send me an email here. And so my username is this Kendra Lee Bryan. There's just an ad in front of it. It's pretty easy. Yeah. I'm going to put my email in the thingy majingy. And you guys, um, yeah. What's your channel? I also tagged her in the description. So worst case scenario, just go to the description and you'll find Jenny's as well. But it's uh, cults and atheists. Oh, there she goes. She put it in the chat for you guys. Yeah, I did the email um, and the, the thing in Majingi. Hold on. We have a really nice comment for you. Oh, Carpimodium. <laughs> Subscribe. Loving the discussion with Jenny. I can tell you firsthand, Jenny was one of the few people in the Sea Org at the time who managed to keep her humanity. Oh, thank you. Where, where are the rest of them at? That's a that's a top tier comp compliment right there. I think. Um. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That person is actually just a great, great, great person all the way around. Hundred percent. This person right here. Mm, yeah. That's awesome. I was going to say good. something, but it might you know what? We've... be too much. Oh. 
you know what? You've been through enough shit. I've been through enough shit. And it's really nice and refreshing when we find people who are just good freaking people. Like, it's kind of a foreign concept. It feels a little foreign, but it feels really good. And we love you guys. And we appreciate yeah. you very much. Absolutely. Yeah. So, and then if you guys, like I mentioned, I'll be doing um, a live here pretty soon with Ruby Frankie's journals. And then did you guys also see that Kevin Frankie is suing Jody Hildebrandt? Anyway, I have a lot of updates on the Frankies. Um, and if you want to get caught up on their stories, I've done several, several lives with cults to consciousness, actually funny that they popped in about Ruby Frankie. So you can get caught up quick there. We have a lot of good discussions about Ruby Frankie. If you want shorter form content, have videos on that as well. But yeah, thank you guys for being here and like the video, leave a comment and we'll see you next time. Live, laugh, yes, leave absolutely. a <laughs> <laughs> Bye.